Why not? See, Steve and I have it fine. Right, Kurt, you can shut up because you're totally evil. Anyway, yeah, whatever, you... dude. Whatever, dude. I just, I smacked you like a biatch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> let's get serious. It's, it's serious time. It's right. serious time. Let's get serious. All oh, right, guys. Do you know what that was for people who have just tuned in? Uh, that was called Kurt panicking and realizing that maybe he shouldn't uh, swear. I've said it. <laughs> what else is new? I did. I admit. Uh, I'll take full responsibility. Uh, from Basically, for Mo and I's old show, we yeah. dropped the F-bomb, the mf or bomb, any bomb we could call someone or call each other, basically, during the show. But now we've kind of cleaned up a bit since we've gone to video. And, and old habits die hard. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I really watch myself. I use Steve as the... The beep guy, because sometimes Mo and I get all just all crazier, just you know, on a rant about something, and it just we yeah, just I'm, don't I'm know this. Believe me. Oh my giddy, <laughs> yeah. giddy god! Right, nevertheless, <laughs> welcome to this week's vidcast. Still haven't been kicked off. I'm actually kind of happy about that because um, between yeah, the welcome, three of us, <laughs> you've got. You've got me, who's trying to hold everything together. You've got him, who can't stop swearing. You've got him, who's probably on a terror watch list. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's definitely true. Don't worry. Do you know I'm, what, right? Actually, I'm thinking of building my own cave, to be honest with you. Yeah, don't. We know what happens to people who live in caves. It's not good. <laughs> uh, All right, so Mo, what was your... Let's, let's go into it real quick. What was your week like, dude? You've oh. had some cool stuff happening recently. Yeah, I've been we've been doing a bit of an ongoing investigation over the past couple of weeks, say up to about a month slash eighteen months it's been taken. Might as well just say it honestly. Um and we've actually just got the second part of it. Um you know when you'd expect an investigation to go pretty straightforward, you go, you go back next week. No, no, we go. Go back eighteen months later and then go back three weeks later and then try and piece it all together. And dude, it does not work like that. Um but nevertheless, second part done and dusted. The place we went to, um, I'm not going to mention the name yet because I've just got this funny feeling I do it. I'll get us in trouble. But we, um, the place we, uh, place we investigate is in the UK. It's an old mental asylum which has been um, pretty much left to rock and ruin, basically. Um, and we're on our second investigation there yesterday. Walk into a room. What you see on the floor? A pentagram. What you see on the wall? A pentagram. What's in the middle of the pentagram on the floor? Dry blood. Uh, awkward. Ah, don't give it. Don't give too much out because I saw the pictures and it's gonna. It's gonna be very. I got just gotta say it's gonna rock once it's, it's put in video format. Yeah, definitely. Don't, but, don't share it with anyone. Keep yeah. it to video. Keep it to video and it, let people say, look, I got a chance to see it, and when yeah. I saw it, I was like. I did not know what was in the middle of it at first. I knew it was a pentagram, obviously. Yeah. And then I was just like, you told me later what it was. And I was just like, yo, that is incredible. So I think it's, I think, um, wait till it comes to video yeah. and let everybody check it out then. You know? Do you know what I found the most concerning about being there, right? Of all the places we could have ever gone to, I've been to some pretty scary places, the same as you, Kurt. And Steve, you've been with me to some of the pretty scary yeah, places. Yeah, exactly. And, it's only when you walk away from them and you really... It's like you look behind you and go, that was really unnerving, to say yeah. the least. Yeah, and, I know what you mean. I was kind of glad yesterday when we walked away at, what, one o'clock... I'd say half twelve this morning, or between quarter past and half past twelve early in the morning, UK time. Yeah. We walked away from there and I actually felt really relieved to get away from it, to be fair, just on the grounds that, you know... Sometimes you go to a place and it could be a little bit apprehensive. And when you're there, you're like game face and you walk away, you think, did I really just go there? Did I really just walk through a lunatic asylum? Did did, did our lead investigator actually get his fat ass stuck on an, um, a body tray? Yeah, he did, yeah. He got stuck on a body tray you in just... a fridge. Aaron. <laughs> he got <laughs> stuck <laughs> on a body tray? Dude, got stuck. He... <laughs> What was better? Oh, right? the, poor old man. I'm it, not going to say anything. Guys, man. no, it gets worse. It gets worse. When you get stuck and you need help out, and there's a body tray. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to show you the piece of paper, right? There's your body tray. There's Aaron on the body tray. He has to slide that way, and there's a handle there, Aaron's legs, 
are there. So this is that's Aaron's legs. Yeah, that's little yeah. Aaron's fat little body and his baldy little head. Yeah. So two of the team members grab all of it. One team member grabs there. The other team member grabs right there, like that. Okay. Yeah. So when the tray slides out and tips forward, and Aaron has to stand down. Where does team member whose hands there? Where does his hands end up? I wouldn't like to say, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it went. No, that, it went that, 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 that was. Yeah. Yeah, it went from being an investigation to a weird, creepy dogging session. I think. Um, it's been he, a different type of investigation, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But record. I've seen Aaron. I have seen Aaron though. Yeah. On another body tray before, when he had the hoodie over his head. I I, I can't say where you. were. I can't say where you were at or anything like that, but he was kind of looking like a child sitting there just like this, you know, looking down, but he was on a body tray at that. So I don't know. I do got to give him credit for being the one to do it, no, though. He got me in trouble. He got me in trouble that day because he was eating sweets and as opposed to being clean. <laughs> I forgot about that. He, he littered. He littered his litter in that body tray, and I was like, do you really, really, why would you do that? I was livid, but nevertheless, oh, it was done. Anyway, he got stuck. He slid out, quite happy with himself. Um, when we were there, we went to uh, we went to a nurse's quarters where nurses live. And when we got up to the top, there was a, a a huge group of people. Every single one of them had really good hair, and they're all lads, like lads with hair bands in. Have you heard the likes men with hair bands in? And I walked around the corner. I see all these people. I was like, "Wow, I've never seen so much good hair in one room." Um, it was like <laughs> it was like walking into a boy band convention. I was like, "This is really." Yeah, it's, it's like that round. It's like that round. was from the last, but anyway. <laughs> I, I, I was disappointed to say the least. I was literally. I wanted to just put my equipment down and turn into Zohan and just start cutting hair. Oh, but oh, you know, take it to yours. I, 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 I don't know. I can't wait till the video comes out. Yeah. I, I wouldn't don't I wouldn't I wouldn't give any sneak peeks. Just keep the one out you have. Just keep yeah. the one out you have. And then when you do it, go go full blast. There's one you know? sneak That's peek. That's the way I, I look at it. There's one sneak peek I can tell you now which has got nothing to do with the investigation, but somebody labeled the cupboard Hitler's rape Hitler's rape room. How what? the hell yeah, someone has got a pen. And written above the top of the door, Hitler's rape room. The door was about six foot tall. It was about a foot above oh, that. Okay. Yeah. And you know when you think of all the lit, of all the things you know yourself, Steve. When we've been to this location, yeah, some yeah. of the stuff written on the walls is pretty weird. Yeah, that, definitely. Another one said, "Pull, please pull this cable. Well, please, please pull this to ring the doorbell to hell." And when I looked at it, it was a mains cable. Like, <laughs> well, that kind of that kind of explains it. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's avoid. Okay, let me. Let's go. Let's go to Steve. I got I okay. We we know Mo's excitement, but Steve, yeah. how's your week been, dude? Um, it's been busy in the sense of getting everything ready for our new conspiracy corner show on the twenty seventh of this month. Um, uh, been chatting a couple of times yeah. with Ed Becker, uh, for different topics. Uh, it looks like we're going to touch on several different areas, uh, current events as well as the usual stuff from past. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of research. A lot of research, sleepless nights again, as usual. Um, messages to and from Ed and yourself, Kate, obviously. Yeah, it's, we uh, got. It's not thing. It's not, it's not done yet by any means. Um, but I think we've got plans to like a mock sort of run of me next week or something like that. Of night, what's the date? On the twentieth, I think it is, which is the Wednesday. Okay. And the following Wednesday on the twenty-seventh is when. It, okay. It goes out. But, uh, okay, so it's going to kick off. We're going to kick off on the 27th. Yeah. Dude, that's going to be epic. I mean, some of the stuff that yeah. we have discussed, I, I know what we like haven't to, gone. Just like to point out as well, for anyone who's watching or, or listening, um, we're going to try and do this one whereby you, you have an input to it as well. Because the way cons conspiracies were completely different to paranormal, although in, at times they do kind of uh, coexist with one another. But um, uh, we're going to try and do it whereby... If you've got any sort of information on particular topics in question, or if you've got any sort of topics that you want us to discuss at length, then just let us know. Hashtag AskBTWN, get in touch with us through the groups or whatever, um, and, we, and we'll do it. We'll try and fit it in somewhere, even no, if it's only for five minutes, you know what I mean? 
I'm looking forward to your conspiracy show. I really am on the grounds that <laughs> it, as we as weird as it sounds, whenever I talk to you, Steve, some of the things you come out with, you, yeah. Wise, I sit there and I go, huh? Really? You sent me a picture of Prince um, Harry a couple of days ago. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, the ginger. Uh, oh, <laughs> that yeah. Ginger. Yes. Was yeah, that my ginger? Uh, I made a ginger comment on that one. Yeah, well, I, I, if you've got it, if you've got it there, by all means, put it up if you want to. I yeah. haven't. I haven't got it on here. I've got it on mobile. If, if not, we'll we'll put we'll stick it up in our show, Kate. We'll show everyone. Uh, all right, we'll do, do that. Let, let, let's just, okay, let's so just say it's going to raise a few eyebrows, and that's all. Yeah, we about that. yeah. I'm and I'm definitely um going to be uh I'm going to be out there researching some uh get some authors on and stuff like that. I'm making some connections right now for that show, cool. and uh to bring people on. So uh. We're never going to be just like our show now. That we're never going to be short of guests or anything else like that. Yeah. I just want to tell everybody like that. My week basically, I oh, bought go. another GoPro. I'm I'm psyched. Three GoPros, two fake GoPros. Okay, and the I... sad thing is, Mo, I see I see you about to bash me. But before you bash me, they haven't sent it yet, that, dude. That, I paid for it. I'm, three I'm days ago. buying GoPros. I'm off. Shut up. <laughs> I buy no. GoPros. I got like this fetish for GoPros. Do you know what the funniest thing is? You're talking like you said, oh, this week I bought GoPros. You're talking like that's a new thing. Every week yeah. you wear GoPros. <laughs> that's, like, that's like breakfast to you, isn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. See the abuse I take being the lone yank? Being the lone yank, this is the abuse you take, but it's fun. Because no. you, if, if you only heard the abuse we give each other, before that says live, there's that little live button there. Yeah, when, when it's not live, the, for the abuse, next comment. We go ahead. For the yeah, next I, comment, I'll go ahead. Keep going. You are not allowed to swear, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> right, our following guests are two Americans. They're really nice people. Yeah, you're a hick. Sorry. I'm a hick. You're a hick. Pedal, okay. pedal faster. Before, I hear banjos. Before, before our two guests come on. I'm a hick. You were you were brought up by hobos. You admitted to it. So you're a chav slash pikey. That's horrible. And I thought Aaron was a pikey, but I think you're the real pikey. And aside from that, you said I, you brought it up with my hobos, dude. Dude, I, I mean, don't how know am who I my real parents are. I don't know who my parents are. I was raised by um, you're a hobo. Uh, uh, you were, you're raised by carnies. <laughs> this is you're why raised I by carnies, off, dude. dude. This is why I went off the planet. <laughs> This is why I tell the guess. No, last time I was at Florida, right? I went to Cape Canaveral. It would have just been so easy to get on that thing, flick a switch, and just see us all later. I don't know if that's survival. But I got to put up with So why didn't I? I love it. I love it. <laughs> why didn't I? <laughs> I you it. should have, Mo. Mo, you should it. have, dude. Not because I dislike you, because you are a fr good friend. I look at you as a great friend. But it still would have been a killer story. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Right back to you. As you do in England, buddy. This is not to you, Steve, not to our guests. This is straight to Mo. And I'm yeah, throwing yeah, yeah. this back his way. And yeah, if you're yeah. Italian, this is for you too, Mo. Yeah. Now, um, aside from that, we know you're a carny. We know you work for carnivals all over England. Yeah. Don't you know you use you use your other job as kind of like a cover. You work at Tilt the World, the Kick Booty, number number any number of rides you no, work. So no, you're a carny. You're wrong. I'm a superhero. You just don't know it. <laughs> not my fault. <laughs> I am. I am. But no, let's go to the news, dude. Let's go to your news. We got to go to news. Oh, no, dude. no, dude. I'm I, taking I, I give up on the news because some of the news that was out there, mate, was absolutely no, embarrassing. We'll still, still put it out there for the sake of putting it out there. Right, okay. I'm going to get some Don't news give it now, out right? Much, much time. What I'm going to do is before I get the news on, right, um, I'm going to bring it back up because I took it off because I, I looked at it and I thought, what can I do involving this piece of news? Um, and I think I'm going to bring the guests on for this part because they think I can see them right. For those who are who are watching on the on the YouTube channel or for watching in the uh, big cast page, you can't see the guests, and I can see the guests, right? And I can just see the way they're sitting there, quite comfortable, they're quite happy, waving away. Nobody else can see them right now. No one can hear them. They don't realise the next question I'm going to ask them is an opinion, right? And I'm going to see how this goes. <laughs> Let's work it. Oh my God! Let's see how this I, goes. I'd like to put on record this has nothing to do with me whatsoever. Oh, Steve, 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 you're in denial. Yeah. Right, give us two seconds, guys. Um, where are you? 
unmuted. Right, can you guys hear us, yeah? Yeah, I can hear you. Superb, you shouldn't have said that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, can la you, you guys can laugh now, but I'm dragging you into the news. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this as news, by the way. Oh, God. Stop, right. stop wiping your tears and get going. Spooky Slender Man spotted in Canuck. Just, just... Just go with me on this one, Slenderman. You know, um, the the really non-mythical creature that was created on the Creepy Pasta website in 2009. No, I'm not talking about that Slenderman. I'm talking about apparently unrelated Slenderman, which looks exactly the same. So, right, okay. A paranormal probe has been launched into the Midlands following four sightings of Slenderman. Long stick-like spectres. Feared around the world. <coughs> Each of the chilling close encounters took place in the Canuck area. Give us a second, get a feedback in. Katie, you okay? Yeah, I think I'm picking that up as well, mate. I'm great, thank you. Cool, sorted, right. So each of the chilling close encounters took place in the Canuck area, and now the X Files investigator, Lee Brickley, is trying to fathom why the ghoul has descended on Staffordshire mining town. This has happened. Ah, uh, it's embarrassing. Nevertheless, just so you know, I'm not making this up. So what? What was your? What was your question like? Does anybody else believe that this is absolute crap? Uh, we are I do. It's absolute crap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all crap. Yeah. It definitely. Right. Let's let's do it. Oh, what are you doing now? Oh God. See, what I can't understand about the Slenderman thing is that no, everyone seems to forget it was actually just a, a YouTube fad. That's how it started out. Look at the screen. So, you know. Can oh, you see? It's even got its own Wikipedia page. But have you seen what I've highlighted? No, I can't actually see that. A fictional supernatural character. <coughs> yeah. Just, just to say. Right, so uh, I'm going to put it to Jenny, right? Your opinion? My opinion? <laughs> Do I think it's crap? Yes, I think that's crap. It's embarrassing, <laughs> isn't it, really? Do you know what the worst part about it is, right? This was started as a, a part of a competition in 2009 to see the person who could create and make viral um, a fictional creature and see if they could create what's called a tulpa or a tulpa, which is um, enough people believe in it, then obviously it becomes true. Yeah. Like religion. Well said, Tom. Well said. <laughs> well, uh, well played. The embarrassing, the embarrassing part for me with regards to it is, um, it's what are you drinking? Who? Ice coffee. It's ice coffee with no ice in it. And Moon it's like out of a mason jar. Of course, I I judge class by quantity, not by. Oh. Yeah. That's, That's how you do it. Yeah. It's a redneck thing. All, all it needs is oh, a little Oh, so it is new China. Okay, I don't know all about that one. Yeah, 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 whatever. You, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, nevertheless, it's a, the, the Tulpa effect. And what the Tulpa effect consists of is um, if enough people believe it, it happens, as I said, or it becomes true. Well, all of a sudden, this Lee Brickley character in Britain who we've got to thank for this crap, um, he's pretty much ran with it. Uh, he's we've I, got black eye kids. We've got. I black just, eyes, yeah. I just inboxed Lee Brickley about it. By the way, guys, oh, as we we're talking great. about, it. Oh, great, love it. There goes our credibility. Now you've now you've contacted them. People are gonna not believe us in anything anymore. Just so you're aware, right? Every time you see a picture of this Lee Brickley, right, he's hugging a book. Okay. Not saying this is anywhere's difference, you know. It's, it's, it's unfair for me to say that all he ever does is hugs his own book, okay? It's unfair. <laughs> it, you oh, never see him hugging his own book. Why oh, was it gone? That was fair. But anyway, what was your question? Just saying, just saying. My question is. <laughs> 
my question is, is, is yeah, which me, me pretty simple question I'm gonna ask everybody is is it just because it's created as a Tulpa effect or it's created not a Tulpa an um, something which is a viral effect, should it actually exist or can it actually exist? What do you guys think? Well it it it, it, it exists but it's only it's a fictional character. It's like Fiction. a comic book or a superhero. So Well I did that's yeah, my, that's like what yeah, like when I started the Red Eyed Kid, that fake article I put out, yeah. Red Eyed yeah. Kids, that made it across the seas because it came back to me full circle about the the story I created about Red Eyed Kids, you know? Oh, yeah, we were just that, laughing yeah. about it, but yeah, it, it it actually did come back. So I don't know. I mean, it it's believable. Doesn't mean it re it's real, but at the I'm same time, I, I'm embarrassed to say that that guy's a human individual from from Britain, you know. This is this is sad. He exists. What's up? He's okay. Yeah, just a bit bored with the story. <laughs> the slender man. You know. Let's set it on fire and move on. It's, go well, on. he's a Brahmi anyway. He's a Brahmi anyway. He, he's not. He's not a Scouse. He's a Brahmi. So oh. there you go. You guys way. are safe on that. Fair, fair that works. Okay. Too. Fair enough. Right. Well, go on, Stephen. You can take over. You want me to take over from now? Yeah, no, I want you to take me away from hey, that as a difference. Thanks, 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 <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Right. Right. Anyway. Anyway. On to, on to our guests, Jenny and Tom. Nice to actually finally meet you. Yeah, well, it's so, sort of in person, if you like. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, Jenny is a fictional horror writer. Um, but this particular book that she's on uh, talking about uh, today is the Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist, yeah, but this this time it's not fictional. Is it, am I right, guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a true story. Yeah, Tom is actually. Uh, am I right in saying you you're actually the, the the eyewitness, so to speak? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, from what I've read, like that that you sent me the other day, Jenny. It it certainly gripped me within the first couple of pages. It certainly okay. did. So um. I definitely recommend it for those that are interested in, in stuff like that. Um, it's a bit of a different, um, a bit of a different sort of, from your point of view, Jenny, because it's, you usually write fictional sorts of horror stuff. Yeah. How did you find suddenly putting your your you, you experience, if you like, behind an, an actual true story this time? Um, it was kind of I don't know. I've, I've just always been interested in that kind of thing, even though even though I'm really skeptical, and like I said, for years I've just been writing fiction, yeah. but I mean, when I met him, and he told me, you know, a couple of years after I met him, and he told me the story, but I was like, I know, this sounds crazy, but when I was 13, and all this happened, and then, like, the more he told me about it, and then I called um, his aunt and his uncle, who were also witnesses, and they told me pretty much the same thing, you know, as he told me, I'm like, maybe there's something to that, and then about a year ago, yeah. we were kind of like, I was like, that, it's such a good story. I'm like, can it, would you mind if I wrote a book? And, you know, so I inter did all these interviews with him, and I interviewed his aunt and uncle and stuff like that. And, yeah. just we, you know, we would just put it together as a kind of, you know. And I thought it would be interesting, too, because, like, I'm coming from a real skeptical point of view also. So I thought that would be kind of an interesting, like. I suppose, I suppose from, from your point of view, Tom, as well, if you wanted uh, to get to get you, um I don't really want to say your story because it's not a story. It's actually something that's actually happened to you, isn't it? Um, if you, but if you wanted to get get it across in the right way, then um, you would want someone like Jenny, who's an experienced writer, to put it across in the right way. Well, yeah. I'm not sure I understand the question. Was that a question? No, it was just. Yes, like, <laughs> just a... yeah, Steve. What, what what was that, Steve? By the way. Oh, you're, you're sort of awake, are you? I thought you'd fall asleep. Hey. <laughs> Is he still alive, is he? <laughs> it wasn't really a question, it was more of an observation, like, if you like. Okay, I've got, I've got a question. A like this. Okay. Sorry, it was a situation like this. She was, she was writing horror stories, and they were good horror stories, but horror stories never really trapped my imagination because it's fiction. I said, uh, what's really scary is stuff that's real. That's what really scares me. And uh, this was something that I grew up with, um, a poltergeist phenomenon. 
and uh, later on some other things happened and uh, after it happened I did a lot of research myself into the field to try to explain what it was I had experienced when I was young and I'm not a parapsychologist but I can run with the best of parapsychologists in the okay. field culture guys I I got a question about that, about your, um, about what you just said about poltergeists. Um, so you grew up actually in a house where there was uh, supposed. I'm very skeptical, so I'm like saying supposed poltergeist activity. Mm -hmm. Did you well, have yeah. a sister? Did you have like a teenage sister, or was there a female around the house around the age of 14 through 16, which no. is the supposed age? You know what I'm talking about? Where I'm getting at with that? about yeah. usually that it's a female, you know, hormonal change and stuff like that that would basically cause something like that. That's actually the folklore behind poltergeist. Uh, if you look at the statistics, it's about equal, male and female. Okay. Okay. No, that's uh, interesting. No, I, I like that take. I like that take. you were 13 and your cousin right. was also 13. He was also 13. So there was two 13-year-old boys. There was two 13-year-old boys, but... Um, there's in poltergeist is not haunting. It's very different from haunting. No, no, it's a, it's opposite. It's opposite right. almost. Poltergeist is uh, not location based. It's uh, people based. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, okay. you know, once it started, wherever I went, there it was. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, you know, it's... it wasn't just the house. We didn't know that house. We were just visiting it. That's where it started. So is it is it fair to say that it was it was to you and not to the house itself? Yeah, I was the, I was what they would call in parapsychology a poltergeist focus or a poltergeist agent. Right, right, right. right. And I'm the only one that's ever co-authored a book. And as far as I know, right now I'm the only one that's talking. Uh, there have been some other ones. Um, two of them are in prison. A lot of them are dead, and some of them don't talk. Uh, probably the greatest of them all would be um, Janet Hodgson from the Enfield Poltergeist case. She doesn't yeah, do yeah, yeah. Uh, Donnie Decker is in prison right now. Again, I've, I've recognized that name, Donnie. De Did you say Donnie, Donnie Decker then? Donnie Decker. Donnie Decker was known as the Rain Boy or the Rain Man. Yeah, yeah he created um, it. Yeah, that's that's been debunked though. I've read more. Skept, uh, more articles debunking the hell out of that guy right there about Decker, about his ability, how it's done, and it's it's it, and they've just debunked as skeptical magazines all the way through. I don't I don't buy the Decker thing as much as I do other things because it's just not it's it's I don't know I just I just don't buy it and that's just me that's just me I'm not saying I'm right I'm. Anybody else is wrong, it's just myself. I mean to interrupt you, Kate. Um, well, I'm going to have to jump off a sec, mate. I've got some sort of issue going on with my laptop. Go for it, it's okay. Jump off. Okay. I'll be back on as soon as I can. Go ahead, don't worry. But yeah, the the one thing that you will point out, though, Kate, which is um, just playing devil's advocate with regards to this, is if you ever come across anything, I've always go back to science whenever we talk about anything like this, but if you go to science, right, if two scientists... Say, for instance, one can test the other one. Science, science is classed as a, like a scientific fact, if uh -huh. you get me. And you, no matter how much you can test it, it can, um, if it's proven fact, then you, you can't actually get around that. Whereas with the paranormal, the second anybody comes along and says, I can test that, it'll, it, it's instantly debunked. So do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying with that. It sort of catches uh, you on the backside a little bit. Oh, but... the, uh, the rain man, he was charged with arson. Shit, I didn't know. I was one, looking up. I, I apologize. <laughs> I was just looking up what he got locked up for. His boss uh, hired him to burn down their failing business. And oh, the boss got caught not he, good. Yeah. It was <laughs> so, an insurance thing. He was friends with the boss, and the boss uh, it, it, you know, hired him to do it, and the boss got caught. He was... And of course, Donnie was implicated. Right. But, so is it, uh, there is was it too fair? many in, in Donnie Deckard's case. There were too many witnesses, uh, too many prison guards. The warden mm -hmm. saw it. Uh, too many policemen saw it. I mean, the, the inmates were afraid of him. And, uh, I've heard uh, the I've heard inmates were fearful of him. Very fearful of him, actually. The they, they, you couldn't lock them up together. They had to keep him in solitary because it would just rain would fall 
out of the out of the yeah. sky, and, or not out of the sky, out of the ceiling, and crawl up walls, and uh, and really, I look at his case, and his case is actually classic poltergeist, other than the fact that he was a little older than normal. But some older poltergeist uh, uh, cases have been around for older poltergeist agents. They're just normally teenagers. Yeah, it's but. It's uh, you talk about science, in my book, at the end, I um, put forth the work of guys that are scientists. Yeah. And some of their work some of their work in the field of consciousness and quantum theory could possibly support the plausibility and a possible scientific explanation for this phenomenon. I, I personally lived it and saw it, and I do not believe it was supernatural. No way. Right. It, I do not believe it was supernatural. It was... Some Interesting. Kind of glitch in physics. It had nothing to do with spirits, demons, devils. Interesting. Or none of that. None right. Of that. Well, and, and, and from what I've learned of it, the implications are far stranger. Yeah. Than the implications of spiritualism or yeah. or you know uh, folklore. You know that's that's crap. What I saw was a reality, and what is real has to conform to the laws of physics. It, it in, does. This case, in this case, I, I personally observed just through observational science, me and yep. the other witnesses, that we do mm -hmm. not know the laws of physics. That's what I'm getting at. Right. It, it does make sense what you're saying, but look what happened, I think it was 2012, with the Large Hadron Collider. Um, what they done was they, they mapped, um, I think it was the Hadron Collider, it there was. was. Something to do with sin, and they, they mapped the speed of a something like a, a particle or an atom going from point A to point B, and point A was like Geneva, and point B was Belgium or something like that, and they, they mapped it at point eight miles an hour faster than it should have been, faster than the speed of light, and it pretty much blew the... It would have it theoretically blew physics to pieces, but for some strange reason it turned out that there was a glitch... Now, my opinion, um, where science and the paranormal is concerned, is paranormal is open-minded. Science is very closed-minded. Um, so, we will, uh, back to when you were saying glitch in physics, I'll, I actually really, I'm glad you brought that up, because that actually sort of makes sense. I'm, I'm surprised nobody else seems to want to get onto it. Because scientists believe it's absolute, that there's nothing other than the research that they've got. There's no other, um, there's no other, alt what's the word? Um, if something's a proven fact, it can't be disproven. If you understand what I mean. If you try and disprove physics, you've you've ripped loads of books apart. But what you're saying is glitch in the physics. That makes sense. It makes total sense. So as an observation, I'm glad you brought it up. Well no, it's a good point because he's taking he's saying basically right there, it's a gray everything's a gray area. I mean this yeah. is the world we live in is gray. And I mean there's the black if you live in the black and white, good luck proving it. You know, yeah. that's one of those deals. So. Yeah. Were you going to say something then, sorry? Uh, yeah, what I was going to say is I said that uh, it may not necessarily be a glitch. It may be just some an aspect of physics that we don't know about. In other words, that we don't really know what reality is. Yeah, interesting. I, 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 interesting. And I think, uh, I think it will eventually be cracked, the, the, the problem. And I think it will have something to do with uh, uh, the science of consciousness. Yes. There are some people that are some guys that have a heavy duty background that are saying that consciousness is not really a product of the brain per se. Yeah. That the brain is more of just a part of a nervous system that connects you to a conscious mind that may be quantum entangled particles. And that yeah. there around you might be a field of very small subatomic particles. And that that's what your consciousness is. Yeah, because um, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff about uh, out of body experiences, NDE, and yeah. uh, I don't, want, I don't really want to. I will tell you this much about my book because I want people to read the book. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't want to give too much of it right now. You know, you don't want to. What I believe, that's the way I'm looking at it. What I believe poltergeist phenomenon is is a modified OBE. But I yeah. believe that it's a modified out-of-body experience. Interesting. In in all people, there's a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere of the brain. Okay. And in a right hand, in a right-handed person, the right hemisphere is uh, kind of uh, 
the crypto consciousness, and this mm. has been proven split brain patient studies where they cut the uh, corpus callosum between the two hemispheres, and the person is basically split into two people that do not communicate with each other. Yeah. Freudian psychology would call this the subconscious. Well, if you can have a conscious out-of-body experience where your consciousness is out, who's to say that your unconscious or your subconscious cannot become exteriorized in an out-of-body experience? Well, back to what you're saying there. Yeah. Lucid dreaming. Uh, I don't know. I think the lucid dreaming doesn't affect physical objects, and this does. Apparently. Um, and this, again, I'm only going by what I call the best way of wearing anecdotal um, accounts. But people have. People have moved stuff. Um, I know, um, again, a few years ago, there's a, a podcast called Mysterious Universe, which is based in Australia. And they had an account of a man who lived somewhere in Britain um, who used to be a peep, say a peeping Tom, he was a bit of a pervy kind of guy, and he bumped into his childhood sweetheart, and he kept dreaming that he was going to see her in a room, dreaming that he was going to get in bed and lie next to her, not in creepy, just lie next to her, and he walked into a shop a few weeks later, she spotted him and went, you, from your dreams, right. and he flipped out on him in the shop. Yeah, I, I've had to have experiences similar to that. Uh, yeah. Also in the army, uh, a spontaneous out of body experience that was witnessed by my roommate in the army at the time. All that's in the book. Because, <laughs> okay. of, the spon hey, because of the spontaneous you, out of body experience. Tom, Tom, can you, before um, I want to do ask a question, please let the listeners know and for the future listeners the name of your book because I don't think we plugged it or it, I, I haven't heard the exact name of it, so that way we can um, get it out there for people. Yeah, it's just called The Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist. Okay, now where did that take place? And real, Just real quick, what part What part of the U.S. did it take place in? California. It's yeah, Mammoth California. Mountain. California, okay. Perfect, like, perfect. It's all, I, it's all, it's all I want to know so people know where it took place, whether it's England, whether it's the U.S., whether it's U.K., I like to do that with authors, so that way people have an idea of what they're reading about and what they're going to be reading about and stuff like that. We, we wrote the book with a certain strategy in mind. Okay? okay. My motivation for the book was to document the case so parapsychologists could read. All right. And as a poltergeist focus, I could get a, give a parapsychologist maybe a different insight than what I found in the other books. We named it Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist because mostly poltergeist cases are named after the location. It's and, true. Yeah, true. The, so now the Jenny did a great job of making this book not so dry. There are some. There's one really benchmark book about poltergeist called This House, House is Haunted, written I've by read it. Diane Playfor. Yeah, and we really liked how that book was very readable, although it did get dry in certain areas. So with this one, I just basically take take you with me step by step how a poltergeist uh, uh, episode kicks off, what it's like, how the people react to it when they see it, and then in the end, and also I tell uh, what people were thinking at the time, what I was thinking. If our, if me and the other witnesses, if our memories didn't match up, we included that. Okay. And, and then at the end, I give uh, the accounts of uh, spontaneous OBE that I had and, and an NDE that I had during a motorcycle accident. And through the insights that I had in those, helped me kind of decode what a poltergeist episode is. Because right. they're related. They're related. Can and, I ask you uh, Then I point the reader to scientists who are working on things that can support the plausibility of what I'm saying. Now, I'm just trying to con help the reader understand it as best as I do. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to prove it to myself. I saw it. I lived it. But I'm just trying to open other people's minds and help out other uh, per help out parapsychologists. No, that makes sense. But just one question I do have to ask with regards to um, a poltergeist account. Are you... Have you spoke to many other people with regards to them having poltergeist accounts? Have you ever came in contact with other people who have, like, have you ever sat down in a room and spoken to them about their accounts? No, poltergeist, uh, poltergeist phenomena is extremely rare. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Extremely uh, rare. And uh, the chances of running into another one is uh, 
Linda Nunn. I think the only the only person we know was, was uh, Ed, right? Yeah. Ed Dunham. Oh, Ed Dunham. That wasn't poultry. That wasn't really. That was a haunting. Yeah. 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 With that back end, right? I don't know if haunting is real. I've never seen it myself. Yeah. Well, uh, I. Uh, collectively, I investigate, uh, Kurt investigates, Steve investigates, and we all do yeah. it our own little way. Me and Steven do it together collectively as a team. And, um, <coughs> sorry, um, who was going with that? Yeah, sorry, we all investigate collectively um, under the same name, and we, we've contacted with Ed. We, we're quite close to Ed. Ed's a great guy. And the first time we found out that we investigated with regards to the paranormal, we were on the radio, and he sent us a message, and he was like, "If you don't, in all due respect, you crazy bastards," was exactly what he said. He literally <laughs> just came out with it and went, "You crazy <laughs> bastards!" Why? The but his answer to it was, "Why would you look for it? Why would yeah. you go out there and actively look for it?" Yeah. And I, I kind of understood when I when I went through his story in depth. I kind of understood what he meant. It's, you know, it, it, without knowing. There's no, no. I'm not going to lie to you. In my my personal opinion. No one's ever going to fully know. It would have known by now. It's been going on for 100 plus years of people trying to find what's going on. We would already know by now, and there's no chance of it coming through. So we just sort of try and get what you can from, it and try and correlate your what you've got and put it all together. If and it, sorry, more. I'm just still getting feedback. You know, I don't know what the user getting now. Yeah, um, Jenny, are you are you guys running? Audio through your laptop. Our audio is great. Yeah. Could you turn it down slightly for us, please? The, just a uh, little bit. Speakers. Yeah, just a little bit. How about please, Sonia. Is that that's a, Yeah, that seems a lot better. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So yeah, as I was saying, when it was only when we were contacted with um, Ed Becker, it was in hindsight realised that it's a little bit more serious. We obviously we go out and technically you could call people like us could be called thrill seekers really easily. But it's only within a little bit of hindsight that you realise what you guys have got. Well, sorry, what, sorry, what you went through and what um, Ed went through. It's maybe not something you should poke sticks at, you know. I think it's a bit more um, serious than people give it credit. So, I mean, from what I've read with regards to your book, um, other than the fact that from what I, it happened in December 1982. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was a month old then. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was yeah. ten. Okay. <laughs> I feel anxious now. Oh. No, no. no, dude, don't worry. If it makes you feel any better, I look, I look older than you do. Don't worry. But, <laughs> yeah, guys, he does. He does. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a shame. Uh, well, I, yeah. I, I, I'll tell you one thing. Poltergeist phenomenon starts off slowly, and I think it's rooted in a in in a kind of a psychological environment that brews for many years before it actually starts. Yes. And it starts slowly, and when they build up to full steam, a poltergeist could easily kill you. It is, it, it is very, very much in your face. They're very active. Anyone who comes into the field of activity observes things quickly, and they, you, you become a believer very quickly because these are... Large objects moving, you usually don't catch them in the act of moving. Normally, yeah. it seems like they teleport because you'll find something from a room downstairs uh, in a room upstairs while your back was turned. Uh, it's, it, it's all in the book. And mm. uh, they're a strange phenomenon. The blood can appear. In some cases, I've heard of urine, but I didn't, we didn't have that. We did have blood. Yeah. Um, they can throw an object and then rapidly stop it before it hits something. Um, Do you? It's, it's a spooky. Uh, it's a very spooky thing. Oh God, I can imagine. But here's a question for you: In your own personal opinion, do you think there's a matter of intelligence behind what happens? Meaning, would you think it was randomised that it may grab a, a cup and throw a cup, or do you think that maybe there's a bit of intelligence behind it? Meaning. There's a lot of it's, there, there's a human level intelligence. I believe it's coming from the right hemisphere of the brain. Yeah. It has a, it has a human level intelligence. Yeah, yeah. But it's it the phenomenon is demonstrative. What it's, it's doing. Just a very interesting point, that actually. It's trying yeah. to show you something. 
Yeah. And there's also a, 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 an amount of Freudian psychology to the things that it does. And overall, there's an overall strategy that a poltergeist is trying to achieve. Yeah. And through all my research and my own personal experience, poltergeists in the end only do two things. They either break a family apart or they're trying to bind a family together to keep it from breaking apart. That's what it's trying to do. Mm. Do you know that, that's, that's actually a that's a good, that's another very good, but there's no middle ground at all. It's either no. one or the other. It's yeah. usually a kid that's trying to get out of an adopted family or a family that yeah. it doesn't want to be in. So it uses the disturbance to call for help. Yeah. Or it's a family that's breaking apart and the poltergeist phenomenon manifests itself to try to bind the family together against a common enemy. That makes but sense. The but the poltergeist itself usually does not harm anything. And a lot yeah. of times it won't break anything. Depending on the situation. If it's a poltergeist that's trying to break a family apart, it could hurt people or break things to help yeah. ratchet up the state of emergency so the authorities can come in. Right. Is it possible for you to talk about, uh, whether it's in your book or not, but how you came to the conclusion that it's all central to your brain? Or is it something in your book? Well, it's in the book. Well, right, I okay. would say, too, that um, kind of related to the last question was that a lot of the things that it did were specific to things you were feeling at the time. Like, right, for example, right. when, when they were first driving up there, and he was starting to get really nervous because he said it was reminding me of the beginning of The Shining. You know, he was a little kid. He's like, we were driving through the yes, mountains. Yeah. And snow yeah. swing, and we were going up, and we'd never been there before. And so he started getting very, very nervous. And then all of a sudden, the hood on the on the Wagoneer they were driving just blew up right. while they were driving for no right. reason. It wasn't broken, it wasn't, you know, and stuff like right. that. So, and and also, you know, the one time when you were kind of wanting to get out of there, because you guys got snowed in. Right. It, and you guys wanted to get out of there, and then it broke. It tore the, the lock off of the right. front door. It tore the, the chain off the, it tore the chain off the front door. As though it was trying to get out. And it left three huge, deep claw marks where it <clears throat> knocked the chain off. So was, based on based on that, then do you think it was actually already there, just and you just happened to be the the unlucky ones to have that apartment at Mountain Lake, uh, Mammoth Mountain Lakes or whatever it's called, uh, and just uh, let it out, so to speak? Or do you think it was actually waiting for you in particular, no. or someone a uh, member of your family? Well, because it, no. it, it followed them after they left. Right. Back it did. To, yeah. Oh yeah. Because they were only there for what five days, six days, right. something like that. And it lasted two weeks. And then when they left, they went back to his aunt and uncle's house, where he yeah. had been many times before, and they'd never seen anything there. But it started happening there right. as well after. If it was a totally, I, I've analyzed the mm. whole thing and looked at it so many times over my life, yeah. and then compared it to so many other cases that were real cases, because I can debunk a case quickly. Because well, a, you've had personal yeah. experience, haven't you? So I'm, I'm not surprised there. <laughs> it, 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 it's very difficult to hoax a poltergeist book because yeah. there's a certain fingerprint, and I'm not going to tell you. What the fingerprint is. <laughs> Only people that have really seen it can recognize the fingerprint of a legitimate poltergeist case. I've got some right over there that are just total crocs. Okay, <laughs> just as, I know they're hoax. All, right. you know, all he's pointing is, right, is at the leg of his telly stand. He's just using it. The books, the amazing books have been used just to prop something up. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are, actually. They are. That's what's funny. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hey, hey, they're not, they're not Tom. Tom. Jenny's books, are they? They're not in my bookcase. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not in my shelves. <laughs> Prop up another shelf. Tom, I have a, but, Tom, uh, I have a quick question for you. Um, what, what's your take on the uh, – uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go Brit smash on this. What's your take on the Enfield Poltergeist? Right, cool. Oh, you want to hear my take on the Enfield Poltergeist? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely authentic. Good question, Kev. Good question. And ah. Absolutely authentic. And do you know why I know it's authentic? Go because for it. Because the girls fake things. Yeah, they did. They did. They faked they quite did. a lot. They, they, and I explain in my book why they fake things. Right. Now, because when you have an outside person coming in to observe a poltergeist, 
the poltergeist agent or the poltergeist focus starts to have a fear that the poltergeist will not be active and make them look like a fool. Yeah. So the, the, the cynicism and the skepticism stops it. It's kind of like trying to take a leak with somebody watching you over your shoulder, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so what the poltergeist agent will do, what, what the poltergeist agent will do, I didn't do this, but I can see why they did it. What a yeah. poltergeist agent will do is fake an occurrence to alleviate the pressure and to build up the confidence to allow it to happen. No, that's a good way of looking at it, but statistically, if the amount of, I first started looking at the Enfield Poltergeist case, and I, I, I ripped it off the first time I looked at it. I thought, that's, that's bull. It's just too much of it. There was, there was too much. I got four photographs and put four photographs together when the girl got thrown out of bed, and I reckon in those four photographs, I proved that their golden piece of evidence was wrong. And that was only proof to me, as we know with the paranormal field. I might have proof, but I can guarantee you there's going to, somebody will come along and go, no, that's not right. And do you know what? I don't put it forward as evidence anymore. Are you, talking uh, about the, the, are you talking about the flying off the bed? Yeah, there's four photographs that were taken yeah, in quick they succession. they weren't flying off the bed. They weren't flying off the bed. They were she jumping off the bed. 100%. 100%. The, the reason why they were jumping off the bed uh, is because the poltergeist, if you've noticed, poltergeist is sometimes correlated with epilepsy. A yeah. lot of, uh, there's a higher rate. I've heard that mentioned before, actually, yeah. Yeah, and what, what can happen is that in extreme cases of poltergeist, and, and, and then look, epilepsy is a conflict between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. That's right. Yeah. All right? So that can help it. That can help poltergeist case to start. Now, what can happen in very extreme cases of poltergeist is that it can appear to be possession. And that's because the right hemisphere of the brain is actually taking over control or main command of the body. So the subconscious yes. starts moving the body. So, so what would like happen is, is that the girls on, would jump on out the... of it, but they didn't feel they were responsible for it. Yeah. Saying, I was thrown out. Well, they were thrown out by the other hemisphere because it caused them to jump. Ah, I got what See, you there's, mean something, there. there's something built into every individual where they, all humans have got it. It's called procedural thought. And what it is is where your body or your brain subconsciously takes control of a situation. How many times, for instance, has one of you guys walked the shop? Or, or walk drive to, home. Yeah, and you don't realize from point A to point B that you, what you've done, what you've passed through, you think, oh, God, I got home quick. You pretty much right. daydream your way home. We've all done it. Yeah. Like procedural exactly thought. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, with the procedural thought, the best part about it is if you consciously know you're going to fall over, you protect yourself. It's what your body does. It's a, it's a fail safe, right? So, on that note, and this is just me being pedantic, I'm going to bring up on my screen now. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. These are the, these are the four images, that, the bad images, like to be fair, but I'll bring them up from start to finish. That's Janet Hodgson. Or Hodges, sorry, yeah. that's uh, getting thrown out the bed, mm -hmm. levitating apparently. Ah, uh, she's jumping. <laughs> Falling gets better. There's the image that nobody really gets their hands on. The fourth image of her putting her feet to the floor. She lands. Yeah. Now you, yeah. you you don't land if you're thrown out of your bed and you're asleep in bed. You don't land. You right. hit the floor. That confused me a little bit too well, much. Well, you, you do land, but you land on your face, not your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, what I think is happening is that she's in bed. The right hemisphere of the brain is highly active. It's controlling the apportation and the movement of objects around her. Yeah. She's trying to sleep, and then it causes her to jump out of bed, and it wasn't a conscious decision. It was an unconscious decision. The same way you would block a fist coming at you. You don't think about blocking the fist. You just do it. Yeah. And that's, like, that's like the right hemisphere that does a yeah. lot of that. Just like when you're driving home in your car and you start to daydream and you get home. To, How did I get home? Yeah. You yeah. drove me here. <laughs> yeah, your right hemisphere did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, so, so it can appear to be possession. And I think the right hemisphere was saying, making her say some of those vocalizations. I was going to say that probably what was responsible for that voice. Right. There. Similar yeah. to, to Tourette's syndrome. 
Uh, and I don't believe that she was uh, in contact with the spirit of Deadville. I think maybe on a subconscious level, she picked up that information and and her right hemisphere ran with it to make right. a face of a fake ghost. A poltergeist so, is not a spirit. Can I just death. ask then, based on what you've just explained there, and very nicely put as well, by the way, Tom, um, is, is that why sometimes that poltergeist activity can be uh, attributed to like a what's a what's the word I'm looking for? Um, schizophrenia, sort of. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Between I the two different sides. When I was having my episode, there'd be I would catch myself not knowing exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Like a few seconds of missing time, or yeah. my aunt said that I was in a frenzy. Yeah. But at the, at the time, you didn't actually know you were in one. You, you, you uh, sort of no, like lost time. Like, it was almost like a yeah. few seconds of missing time here and there. Yeah, yeah, like you, like you told me that you'd show up in certain places and then like not remember how you got there. Not remember how I got here, you know. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the house was in such a panic that was the least of my worries at yeah. the time. Right. Uh, uh, exactly like what he was sent, the way he described driving home and not remembering the trip. Yeah. You're yeah, yeah. doing that a few seconds at a time sometimes. Right. No, that's, that makes total sense. I mean, we're going to spend the rest of our lives trying to work out how the hell your brain works, and no one's ever going to get it right. The same as the paranormal. We'll never get it right. There's no definitive answer, and we're not going to see it any time in the near future. And if it isn't for theories, like as I said, the theory you gave forward, when I first heard it, just when you first said it a little bit earlier, I thought, I'm going to give this theory a go. But I think right now I'm, I'm more erring towards what you're saying. To be fair, it seems to make sense. As opposed to it being something external that maybe there's something we can control yeah. because what I actually like there is, is the way you described it. You, you described it in such, such a straightforward and simple way. It was easy enough to understand. And I think that can come back can kind of be a problem as well. I don't know what is I mean. that in the book? Is it described that easy, uh, Tom? Yes. I think yes. I used really similar words. I mean, I pretty much you know paraphrased because we've been talking about this for years and years and. Back yeah. and forth. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. And and here's here's a uh, a contributing piece of evidence. Based on what I saw and what we all saw during a poltergeist event, if it was an exterior external being that was invisible with this kind of force, all right, it would kill you. Yeah. It would kill you. Yeah. Well, yeah. It so could have some killed of the you. Things that it did, it what, do you, have no problem. what would you do? Arrest it? You're <laughs> exactly. Arrest it and, 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 and you're going to take it. You're going to indict it. You're going to indict it and convict it. <laughs> so, yeah, Tom, these guys would try and do that. Yeah. Right. I've seen them try and do it before. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, there is a. Um, with, re with regards to what you were saying with um, oh, how can I put it? Oh, trust me to get mental block. Brain fade. Yeah, that that never happens to me normally. But yeah, that's right hemisphere. That and the left hemisphere. Yeah, my, my right hemisphere. <laughs> my right hemisphere has got a lot to answer for. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, 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 all, all, all joking aside, what I'm saying based upon observational science what me and many and several other witnesses outside of the family saw because it continued at my aunt's house and the yeah, neighbors yeah, yeah. witnessed it there too. Tom, Tom, the implications I, of this, the implications for this are huge. Yeah, the, I, can, I can totally agree with you on that one. I mean, the potential that people's brains have actually got, the amount of power the thing's got. Put it this way, right? I'm going to go back to the Enfield poltergeist. If it wasn't for the fact that in front of that police officer that that chair moved, I wouldn't have put so much credence into it other than the fact that somebody actually physically put all their professional um, credibility on the line to prove the point and that every time you see Janet, she was smiling. It's only in hindsight when you think of that that, as I, as I said, I'm, I could actually I can see why... You've came to the conclusion you have done. People have looked at it from every angle, which way. But it I, I, I also want to know, on top of what Mo's saying, Tom, 
Um, has this ever happened to anybody else in your family? No. You know, aside from your mom and dad, maybe no. distant cousins, or I'm just curious, trying to put something together here to no, figure that out, you know? I don't think there's any kind of genetic link to this. Yeah, I was curious uh, if that no, was just no. like a weird thought I was having no. about that right there. Well, there must be a certain kind of personality that right. triggers it easier. There is definitely a personality type. Okay. Right. That you have to have. All right. But and and you at least have to have seemingly some kind of a strange version of intelligence. It's been noticed that <laughs> it's either someone who is above average intelligence or below average. No one average. Okay. It, it, actually, it, it does. It's such weird that when you, you now that you've pointed that out, it does usually yeah. happen that way, doesn't it? It's yeah. usually like someone with a very high IQ or a really low IQ in in retrospect. Well, no, 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 no. If they're dumb as a rock, it won't happen. <laughs> if they're geniuses, it won't happen. If they're average, it won't happen. You have oh, to be below average yeah. or above average. Yeah. Because oh, if, you're you, average, if you're average, if you're average, you're gonna you're going to uh, believe in a certain mindset that will prevent it. If you're uh, above average, you'll be too grounded in reality, and it won't happen because you'll stop it. And yeah, if you're yeah, dumb, yeah. you won't be able to imagine it. <laughs> so, but if you're, if you're below average, you uh, won't know any better, so it can happen. If you're above average, you're thinking that maybe it could happen, and it will. Right. Well, so, Mo, no, Mo, 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 it's not going to happen to you, dude. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 it's not going to happen, Mo. What have you got there before? <laughs> Even I, maybe, but not you, Mo. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry Woody. I got uh, this. But I don't, oh, think it takes, I don't think it takes a special kind of brain or anything. It's more having to do with uh, belief systems and uh, attitudes. And more circumstances, than, And circumstances. Too. Because, like, I mean, it only happened, for some reason, it happened right. at that particular place, and it never right. happened to you before that. And in the book, I tell how and why the poltergeist incident stopped. And that was another key to writing this book. Uh, a, a poltergeist agent can stop the man manifestation uh, once you become consciously aware of it and your role in it, it. It will stop. Yeah, because you initially you did think it was external. You have to believe it to be an outside force. Because when no. as soon as you realize right. that yeah. it wasn't external, right. then it stopped. Mm -hmm. There's a safety mechanism built in. That's probably the best the description of right. possible poltergeist activity I've ever heard. Actually, now, now that well, you've pointed that out, but now yeah. that you've pointed that out that way, it seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot consciously do this. You have to allow it. Yeah, it has to be allowed in right, a way. Then, yeah. Because yeah. think of the chaos that would happen if you everyone could, yeah. could yeah. do it. <laughs> And, exactly. Yeah, it, it would be life threatening yeah, awesome. if you could consciously will someone's head to be crushed. You could, you just do it, and, and that would be you'd it. You'd have thousands it? of people, you'd have millions of people crushing each other's heads <laughs> from across the globe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that'd make a good reality TV show somewhere. Hang on, you've just gave me a good idea. Play it, do us a favor, don't move. <laughs> yeah, 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 I knew that was common. Say, guys, being the lone American on this, I just get abused. That, that's it. I do nothing wrong. I have never done anything wrong to these guys, ever, and I get abused. They're British. They don't know anything better. <laughs> I'm going to have a curse guys, put on Mo later. No, do you know what, right? If I was smart enough to take offense, I probably would, but luckily, I'm too stupid for that. Yeah, it's, it's just born into our in our genes over here. We yeah. just like that. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, and Tom, I've got a question for the two of you, right? I'm going to ask you the question separately, right? So I'll start with you, Tom, right? You have had um, the, what we'll, I'm going to class it as a poltergeist encounter, but I think using the term poltergeist in its more traditional term maybe doesn't reflect what you've gone through. Um, but exactly. where do you stand on the side of the paranormal itself now? With, after what's happened, where do you stand on the paranormal? Believe it or skeptic. Uh, yeah. The, well, okay. First of all, the term paranormal is a mixed bag. Yes, it is. Uh, all right. Definitely. A Bigfoot okay. would not be paranormal. A Bigfoot would just be an ape. 
That's cryptozoological, isn't it? Yeah. A UFO okay. would not be paranormal. That would just be extraterrestrials. Or created, or created by your government. Let's just say yeah. that. I've got to know that one. Right, can I... Oh. All right, then, let me reiterate it. Where do you stand on um, ghosts? Let's just put it that way. I've never seen one. Um, not I thought I did, but it turned out to be another phenomenon that is an artificial ghost, basically. The ghost of a living person, not a dead person. <laughs> um, That's a good twist, actually. I like that. I I've heard of that before. It's like almost right. a doppelganger effect, in a sense. Yeah, it's it's an exteriorized out of an exteriorized subconscious acting okay. as if it was an independent being. Because that's what you, so, believe. Yeah, that's what you believe it is. Now, now the kids that are poltergeist agents tend to be suggestible. If you get the clergy involved and they try to exercise this thing, it's going to become a demon. That's how it's going to act. Like ah, very good. Fair. It, That's a very it, good it, point. It, it is very susceptible to suggestion. Yeah. See, I've often wondered why, from sorry, Mo. I was often wondering, like, from a, a religious point of view, that like you just pointed out, uh, why the especially the Catholic Church or the the whole the uh, exorcist classes and courses and stuff like that in the Vatican and what have you or, or, on something that supposedly isn't real and I've always that's always kind of baffled me but that's a very good point that again um, it, it, maybe that's why they do do it maybe they encourage it who knows uh, yeah they might and actually I think yeah. on, on particular cases they did, you didn't have anybody come in on your case but no. I think on no. other cases where they called the clergy it in, makes it work so the power of Christ <laughs> didn't compel you then no it doesn't tell you. Yeah. The, the Mo the angry Catholic. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> phenomenon, if you tell it it's a ghost, or if you it will become a ghost. If you tell it it's a demon, it will become a demon. Because it's trying to get attention. You you're talking about the subconscious of a twelve or thirteen year old. Yeah. yeah. And that could be very dangerous, uh, but really you are. But, <laughs> it, but it never, it, it, uh, there's been no recorded accounts that I believe of a person being killed. I think yeah. there's a line drawn uh, between certain things. Um, well, to make to sort of go alongside what you're saying, more people have been killed in exorcisms than they have been killed by poltergeist activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's now, true. I'm, this is not to say. This is not to say that exorcism may not be real, because there are some medieval accounts of exorcism that sound like poltergeist, but most of yeah. them don't. See, the thing is, though, but it, it makes you wonder, should you see a priest, or should, whether you should go and see a therapist and try and talk it through with the therapist, as opposed to having someone to splash water in your face and tie it to a bed, apparently? <laughs> it yeah. makes you wonder which person you should actually take to, because... I believe you should see a parapsychologist because a psych psychologist or psychiatrist will not believe it, and if they do believe it because they see it or witness it, they will run. Or medicate it. They'll probably the, the, medicate it. The, 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 this is, this oh, is oh, we're still yeah. trying to teach you to be intelligent. You don't want that. <laughs> uh, one, one, thing, one thing that I observed uh, during a poltergeist phenomenon is that Common people, when they observe this, react in very unpredictable ways. Hmm. Uh, some people are just struck, <coughs> dumbstruck. Some people yeah. are and say nothing. They'll just sit on the edge of a couch and with a blank stare. Yeah. Um, some people will say, "I have to leave," and you'll never see them again. Yeah. Kind of like flight, fight or flight sort of reaction. Yeah. 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 And I like how you bring that up. I like how you bring up fight or flight. Because there are some parapsychologists that the poltergeist initially is tripped by flight or, or fight or response, fight or flight, and yeah. that's what I was having in the car on the way there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which started it. Okay. Do you, that, do you reckon that could be where the conflict starts within the brain? And sorry, sorry again, Mo. The, okay. That sort of reaction, the fight and flight, natural reaction that we have, could be where Fear the conflict helps. starts within the brain itself. Fear aids. AIDS uh, st uh, helps it begin, and then yeah. once once it starts, 
it will respond to other emotions. Like we, there were times where we were just in wonderment, and it would entertain. You could interact yeah. with it. Yeah, it would do things that you asked. Sure, it would do what you yeah. said or do what you asked, and then play little games and variations on what you asked, uh, moving objects around. Uh, and then if it did something that was big uh, or, or and impressive, and if you got intimidated yeah. and, and fearful, it would start to become intimidating. Right. And then oh. it would start a cycle yeah, of that. Yeah, it responded to however you responded to it. Right. Okay. It would mirror. It would, it's kind of like the psychological equivalent of a dog fighting itself in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen my dog. Brains just exploded a bit then. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. right, okay. Now to move swiftly over to Jenny, your opinions, because I know you're a skeptic, but you're a horror writer. Um, yeah. oh, where do you? Uh -huh. um, I am pretty much still a skeptic. Um, I do believe uh, that Tom experienced what he said he experienced, and I believe that the reason for it was uh, was as he said it was. Yes. Um, other than that, I don't. I don't particularly believe in ghosts. I've never seen one. I've never experienced anything like that. I don't really believe it's possible. I could be wrong, obviously. Um, yeah. But I don't know. For, about pretty much everything else, I'm like. Probably bullshit. Probably. Bullshit. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, that's cool. <laughs> I, I, like, I did. I hope I can swear on here because I'm just. I'm I did. I did see on your web page, uh, Jenny. We would do research on guests before they come on and see, you know, <laughs> so we could do some background, you know, to see what to ask, what not to ask, and stuff like that. I noticed oh, you yeah. said atheist. And I'm I'm a rocking agnostic towards atheists, so yeah. I'm kind of stuck in that small little gray uh, section. Kurt, of you everything. Just name, you just name your own gray area, Kurt. That's what it is. I'm an agnostic. <laughs> yeah, well, I did, it is my own gray <laughs> area. Dude. Just be, be honest. Man. Be honest. <laughs> you don't believe don't... It, you don't believe in a god that was written about in a Bible, which is apparently the truth. Um, 400 years later, by 32 different people. That's an yeah, I know we've that. talked yeah. about that. I, it's accurate. all bullshit. But yeah, it's all it's all bullshit. But we wouldn't be looking for the paranormal though. If you if you did believe, you have to have some sort of belief or want to have a belief. It yeah. could be a multiple dimension kind of thing. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? It I'm just doesn't thinking. have to be. I don't believe in heaven or hell. I don't hmm. believe in any of that. I just think that you know there all there could be multiple dimensions out there that we don't know about. Yeah. Who knows? Based on, based on my experiences with the out of body experience, you're right. I didn't ex see things that were literally the heaven and hell as described in the New Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah. Were, uh, no fire like, flames, though. More like another dimension. Like another dimension. Right. Well, do you know what? It's, it in the book. Yeah, sorry. it's sorry. funny that you mentioned that because all of a sudden now they're trying to use the Hadron Collider to prove if small black holes have gravitational pull. To see whether they, because now scientists are starting to oh, err upon the fact that CERN, whatever it's called, CERN, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. now they're trying to work out whether or whether or not um, interdimensional or if, yeah, yeah, inter interdimensional existence actually is there, and the scientists are actually starting to think maybe we were wrong, and I think it's one of the rare times they're actually starting to use the brain and stop using. Well, from what I've read on that. Um, it, it it seems like they already they've already kind of accepted that they do exist, and they're trying to now figure out how to, uh, I don't know, utilize them. I suppose is the, probably the best way to put it. How you do that, I don't know, but that's from what I've read. Like you know, they're ripping this planet apart if they do. But yeah. no, it, it, <laughs> I, I know. I, do you know, from talking to you guys, you've actually changed my opinion slightly with regards to poltergeist activity. I'm not going to say you've completely swayed me because. The one thing I'm going to say is I'm always going to try and be open-minded. I'm going to take every opinion I can, and I don't think I'll ever have an opinion which will be mine. I think I'll just listen to everybody's and see which seems to make um, the most logical sense. And if, if this was one of those shows where at the end of it I could judge us, I'd say you're pretty close to making the most logical sense with regards to this. But just blaming it down to pre-pubescent, or sorry, pubescent girls, and their hormonal imbalance causing chairs to move and people to lock onto it. It seems like a convenient answer, whereas what you guys have suggested that actually does make sense because why have so much brain capacity, brain power, 
for it not to be used and not know what it does in the first place. So, just a quick, quick question for Tom. Do you think it could be anything to do with telekinesis in that respect? Oh yeah, it is. Well, okay. like like subconscious. Yeah. Telekinesis. Yeah. The definition of what telekinesis is is moving objects with the mind. And that's almost parapsychology, 1900s, you know. Uh, yeah. And that might be a description of what an observer is seeing. But I don't believe the mind can move an object. No. I don't think it's the mind that's doing it. It must be some kind of a field of subatomic particles that we would call the consciousness. Yeah. Somehow doing it in a in a different spatial dimension. Um, so no, uh, boy, this it's in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it there. It definitely does. Right. I mean, the the way it acted, you definitely did get the feeling that it was a field phenomenon. It's a field phenomenon. Because at one point, you, I mean, you guys would see the field, a field, right? And the way things moved, like um, like the comforter that came off the right. head, it seemed to like move. All in my, as if all, the field right. it. As if the field was penetrating it, all of it at once, and causing that comforter to jump up off the bed and slide across the room and wrap around my aunt and uncle's feet. So it wasn't grabbed by an invisible hand or. I'll, I'll or, throw it over there like uh, it was. Uh, it was a field phenomenon. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's 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 an it's an area of effect, and it's penetrating the matter throughout. In that room, and it was cold. Right? And it's That's cold. Where things would happen. Right, it's cold. It moved around, and, and the field was barely visible. It looked like blue cigarette smoke, a haze. But instead of seeing wisps or swirls, it was uniform. It looked a lot like you know when you rub your eyes or you look at the sun and you look away, you'll see a spot in your eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What it looked like, except it was blue, and it would cover the entire ceiling, maybe about sometimes two feet thick. Or sometimes it would just look like a round ball, like a tennis ball. And here's the weird right. thing. Is if you looked directly at it, you had a hard time seeing it. You had to look a little bit to the side so you can pick it up yeah. in your peripheral vision because your peripheral vision scans at a higher rate. That's right, uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. you couldn't look directly at it. You, it would just, if you, for instance, if it were to cover the entire ceiling and you tried to focus your eye on a part of it, you'd see a clear spot and then a blue border. Yeah what it was like. And it was subtle, but you leave it stand there going, do you see it? you see it? Yeah, I see it. You could look down the hallway into a room at the very end of the hallway, and, and, and it, you would see that it would be inside the entire room covering the whole doorway. Yeah. Your aunt said it, it looked like um, indoor weather. She said, yeah. you, she said, you know how you look outside on a snowy day and it like, has that blue cast? Yeah. She said it yeah. looked like that, but inside. And you could put your hand in there, and you wouldn't feel anything, and it wouldn't swirl or like, like cigarette smoke would. You put your hand in there, and it would just feel cold. Wow, that's, that's cool. But I wasn't sure. If it, here was the weird thing, and we never really could get down to the bottom of it. If I took a thermometer and put it inside that room, I don't know if it would register cold. I'm not sure it was actual cold. It may have been something kind of electrical. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. But I know yeah. people say people say that quite a lot about static. That it feels like it feels cold when it technically isn't. Well, no, it's, right. it's yeah. quite an impressive right. way of looking at it. So, so we right. Sure. Sorry. Right. No, just, just. That's just... oh, okay. I was about to say we're actually coming to the end of the show now. Got a few minutes left. So what I'm going to do is just easier than. What are they? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We you start at five minutes late. You know, don't be. Ah. Uh, yeah. We can yeah. Start as long as you want. Anyway, <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. Carry on, Tom. Shut up, you. Carry on, Tom. Come on. Go back, Tom. I wanted to mention. Oh, oh, I, I wanted to mention something before I forget. Yeah. One of the, we sent this book to a British parapsychologist. You probably know him, Steve Mera. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I've read it. Yeah, yeah. From Africa. He loved the book, and he had two more cases that he had investigated, uh, poltergeist cases. And he asked Jenny to write these books. One of them is the Rochdale case, and the other one is the what? Stockport. The Stockport case. And, the case. and they're well documented. He has a lot of the photos and the newspaper yeah. clippings and uh, water, uh, analysis. water analysis water results. Analysis. So Jenny's going to write two more books about poltergeist. So I'm working on the Rochdale one now. Rochdale now. That will probably be done in uh, how long, maybe? It'll be a few months. Probably. A few more months. Yeah. Have you 
have you, Tom or Jenny, been hit up for any shows or anything like that? Because I know yeah. since that's the hot thing right now with, yeah. with the, I say in quotations, I say paranormal. But have you guys yeah. been hit up by any producers or anybody like that that uh, actually want to cover it? Yes. Yeah. Can we? Can we say? Or you can probably say. Are you allowed? Yeah, I know. Sometimes you can't say, so I understand at the same time. So. But I'm not sure if it's going to go through. But we did get contacted by um, a haunting. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. I know a haunting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, that's one of the better ones. That paranormal witness, yeah. I like a lot. Right. So yeah. We're, yeah. we're looking at paranormal witness. Yeah, also. we might. Yeah, we might want to do that. They're only going to pay you 200 bucks and to fly you out there. I'll give you that. I talked to a couple people that were on it, so I'll let you know early. <laughs> what, what, what did he say? What, what did you say? I said that uh, a couple couple friends of mine have been on it, and they said they only got $200 in uh, a hotel yeah. room. Yeah. basically it, yeah. But it's yeah, still cool. It's still well done. I mean, I like it. I like that kind of stuff, paranormal, versus people going out and investigating and watching that on TV. I'd prefer to watch it happen to people that yeah. aren't expecting it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 think, uh, I, I think a lot of the well-known ghost hunter shows have kind of done oh. a disservice. They've, they've yeah. played. It's played out. It's played out. Right. Uh, and, uh, well, and you know, nothing ever happens on the show. No, nothing <laughs> happens on those shows. Not any of the ones I've ever heard. <laughs> you know what, guys? guys <laughs> just, just, I, just I think, based on my experience, there's a reason why things tend not to happen. Um, uh, when you uh, take when you take a phenomenon like this and put it under a lot of scrutiny, I think it takes away the psychological background and the psychological what, what, what emotional content that you need. For certain things to happen, like for instance, yeah. what would have happened if you brought, say, James Randi to my poltergeist? It probably yeah, would have stopped. Yeah, old Randy. Well, hey, maybe you'd win that million dollars, dude. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. I've been. Yeah, he's probably to... broke as hell. <laughs> this, this is. I've been thinking about that for years. If James Randi had come over, it probably would have stopped for about a half hour. Yes. As, soon as, dropped, as soon as he dropped his guard and I became comfortable and the, and the people became comfortable around him, he would probably start off again slowly. And if he saw it start off again slowly, he would have left the house and said that it was a hoax so he didn't have to hand out the million dollars. Oh, yeah, he's, he doesn't have that money. That, no, that see, the thing is, it's, it's so easy yeah. to, <clears throat> to disprove the paranormal. It's so easy to because it's people's personal feelings which are always depicted to somebody. And I don't know how many times I've come in contact with skeptical societies. I am I'm really, when I say skeptics, I mean I'm talking like staunch skeptics where, you know, you take a picture and the picture could have like, I don't know, you could have Henry VIII in the middle of the picture high fiving somebody and they're just going to go, it's dust. Or it's easy to debunk because you know, a lot of um, heavy, like, like blatant, like when I say blatant, I mean like violent skeptics. You could hand them the best piece of evidence you'll ever see, and because they they don't believe it, all they could come back with is, well, it can't be real because the paranormal isn't real, and that's not slightly, to be fair, not good enough. It's as opposed to trying to use a bit of thought and say, well, maybe you think it could be, as you did yourself, Tom, where poltergeist activity is concerned. Maybe it's not this. Maybe it's that. You've actually you've done it the right way where a lot of people don't do that a lot of people are just quick to write stuff off and I can guarantee you now and please don't take offense to this Tom a lot of people will probably look at what you put because you've accounted it as a story a lot of people will look and think you faked that sure. and you know you lived it yeah we figured probably sure but you know what I don't care I'm glad you don't care because people yeah, I don't care. He knows he it's the best it. attitude to take it is it's brilliant it's the best way to do it do you know why I don't care because people have seen the phenomenon yes will recognize it as yeah that's it and what he's saying does match up. That's yeah. what they're going to say. And I, I, I mean, I believe you, and that's right. kind of a big deal because I don't believe Yeah, you. she wouldn't believe you. <laughs> You know, I've got to say as well, I, I did like the way at the st in the foreway to your book, Jenny, where, whereby you were quite upfront about being a skeptic from the off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You didn't give the yeah. sort of false impression. And I, 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 I suppose that's the part that grabbed me at first. In in the, in your yeah. forward, so I thought that was well done. I've got to say that. Like, yeah. do you know what? Like I said, that was one of the things that interested me in writing in the book because I said, you know, I've 
generally before that, I was like, I don't believe any of this stuff. Like, I used to watch The Haunting yeah. and stuff, and I'm like, bullshit. You know, but, <laughs> I mean, but now I'm kind of like, well, maybe not. Maybe some of it's not it's, bullshit. <laughs> well, he's such a, uh, such a convincing guy, though, isn't he? Let's be honest. <laughs> that's what I mean. And it's like, I, even I didn't really, like, when he first told me, I was like, really? Really? Come on. Really? But then, then when she heard me talking about it to my aunt and I, uncle, and, and they, they're bringing up things said, that I... Them. And talk to them, yeah. and they will tell you what happened. <laughs> so I called them, and they told me the same story. That and they yeah. they couldn't believe it either. I mean, they. I mean, when it first started happening, your uncle Red was. Oh, he was he in was, total denial. He was just like, "There's got to be somebody <laughs> in here." There's always one, isn't it? Tom, there's always one. And he was like pulling the carpets <laughs> up and stuff yeah. like that, right. like looking for wires right. and looking for his. <laughs> yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta give my uncle some serious props. Because we were in that house terrified. I knew that there wasn't a person in this house and that that house wasn't rigged with wires. He yeah. would go down into that bottom floor by himself and leave the <laughs> lights off trying to catch this thing. And he'd come back up with his face white as a ghost. Yeah. He, said it, he said he really had to control his fear because you feel this feeling of being watched and yeah. scrutinized by this field, this field of consciousness that's down there. And it's an alien feeling. It really is. Interesting. Now that's the weird thing. Poltergeist falls into the realm, into the category of paranormal. And there's a lot of other things that are in the category of paranormal. Do you know, paranormal. kind of, believe, like, you might say, I can hear me, you know, do you know what it's, it's that's kind of pointing towards, based on what Tom's just been saying here, is what, what they kind of found out from the skull experiments, which we've looked at recently. Yeah, interdimensional stuff. That's that's the way I'm leaning towards more. So certainly the last few weeks, anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It does make sense. Experiments are yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. Well, this is sense. what I wanted to say. Poltergeist falls in the realm of paranormal. There's a lot of other mm -hmm. stuff in the realm of paranormal that I don't believe exists. I don't believe. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I don't totally believe so. Okay, but you also have to say that. If you go back far enough, electricity was also in the realm of paranormal. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, so was space travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They didn't believe in that. Yeah, but you don't really know whether they've done that, Judy. Let's be honest. <coughs> <laughs> 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 just, just the bottom of the show. <laughs> yeah, just, Steve. I don't mean to, I don't mean to sound horrible, but I've been in Florida when there's been a space launch. Uh, I kind of seen it fly up. Yeah. That's weird. Disney has made. Don't believe everything you see. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about Mo, Steve. We're talking about Mo. Let him go. Just let him go. Easy. Cinderella here. Steve, <laughs> don't mess with me dreams. Okay, just stop, stop shooting me dreams. Let him go. Let him go. Yeah. Let him work it. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> the Apollo project was on on par with the building of the pyramids, and he wants to say that it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, faked all, they faked all those launch vehicles. I'm from, I'm from Florida. I, yeah. I, I've, seen, I've seen shuttles go up since I was a little kid. There's too many old launch vehicles <laughs> laying around in museums. It would be too uh, difficult. It would be, it would be harder to fake than to really do it. I just love. I love opening these cans of can of worms. You know. <laughs> 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 oh, oh my god. Really oh, sorry, we've got you saying, mate. <laughs> really, what they did with the moonshot is just not impressive. They just took a big ICBM and stuffed a couple guys in the nose. That's all they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shot it at the moon. Not hard. I hope you get there. And they, <laughs> they ended it with a computer that was uh, more primitive than a digital watch. Yeah. And it didn't end. <laughs> it is. It it in my eye. Yeah, Give it some more thrust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! Do you know what I thought was funny? If you look at Apollo 13, right, they had the they had the space capsule, right, which was a adrift in space, right, and they managed to fix it with pieces of like a Hoover pipe and something else, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's they were good old. Marks on the window. They were yeah. drawing marks on the window. Point it that way. Yeah, that was the <laughs> <laughs> nowadays, if so, nowadays, if something goes to shit, you get your Tom Tom sat nav out and work out where you're going. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, those, those guys had the right stuff. They were they were tough. They were tough no, fighter no, pilots no. or test pilots, you know. No, no, you're looking at the wrong way. They didn't have the right stuff. They were like your granddad, everybody's granddad, who goes, "We can fix it with a hammer." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's well, his way, like, well, yeah. yeah. 
in those days, that was the right stuff. <laughs> that was the right stuff. Oh, boy, it worked, it worked. Right, well, Steve, it is officially coming to the end of the show now. It it's is, yeah, I'll give you that, yeah. Right, so what I'm going to do is, before we go, just because I can, as I normally do, um, <laughs> Excuse me. Stop coughing, Steve. I couldn't help it, sorry. I hate you. What happens if I cough? No, you're all right. You can get away you're with it. So you're a guest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the book. Um, for people who are away, you can get it on Kindle. Get it on paperback. Don't buy it used. Get it on paperback. Get it new. Um, I'm not going to go through all the, the reading through because if you listen to the show, you should know enough of it. Um, if you don't buy it, then stop listening to the show, please. I've only like I've, as I said earlier on, I've only read the first, the first few. Uh, Pages of it. What what Jenny sent me the other day before coming yes. on, and it gripped me something wicked. So I'll I'll definitely be investing in it. Oh, no. In hundred percent, hundred percent. So grab onto it, guys. And listen, thank you very much for coming on. It's been brilliant. Um, it has. It, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much for the utter matrix moments of changing our perspective within regards to this. That's what it was like, weren't it? He's Neil. That's what he. That's who he is. Don't insult ah, no. Actually, no, he's Morpheus. He's more Morpheus than yeah, Neo. Nobody wants to be Neo when he can Morpheus. be Morpheus. <laughs> so anyway, guys, right, take it easy. Thank you very much for coming on, and we'll catch you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Bye. Bye.